Hey everyone, welcome back with a new lecture from Accredited Laboratory. Today's lecture will be around accuracy, trueness, and precision, which are very important parameters to describe the quality of results obtained with the method and to ensure that you can get accurate and reliable results using the method selected for validation. What are the difference between accuracy, trueness, and precision? Accuracy, which is closeness of results together and to the true value. If you spike the sample with a known concentration, you should get result which are close to the true value to be accurate. As here in this example, if you spike the sample with 5 BB and you got 4.97, 5.01, 5.04, 4.99, all of these results are closed to the true value which is 5 BB. So all of these results are accurate. You got accurate results. And you can know that from the recovery. You will calculate the recovery for each result. Recovery which is equal to practical result divided by the theoretical result multiplied 200, 4.97 divided by 5 multiplied 200. Recovery should be within acceptable range according to the guideline you use as example from 70 up to 120 percentage as in your chem guideline. So if the recovery was within the acceptable range according to the guideline you use in this case, you can say that results are accurate. Trueness as in guidelines is closeness of mean of results to the true value. If you spike the sample with a known concentration and you did replicate analysis of these spike samples, all of these results should be closed to the true value. And in this case, if you calculate the average between all of these results, also will be closed to the true value. But if there is any result in between these results far from the true value, so also the average will be biased from the true value. There will be bias from the true value. And you will know in this lecture how to evaluate the trueness by calculating this bias. As here in this example, 5 BB, you got 4.99, 4.97 and other results. At the end, the average was 4.98 BB. So the recovery within the acceptable range and the average is closed to the true value and the results are true. There is no bias from the true value. Precision as in your chem guideline is closeness of results together but not to the true value. As here in this example, if you spike the sample with known concentration 5 BB and you got 3.2, 2.9, 3.01, 3.0, point whatever results, all of these results are close together but not to 5 BB which is the true value. So here the results are not accurate but precise. So it's better to have accurate and precise result. That was the definition for all of them to know the difference in meaning. But how to evaluate these performance parameters in the real validation? Method validation quantify accuracy by assessment of both systematic and random effects on results, systematic and random errors. So before evaluation of these performance parameters, we should know the relation between errors and these performance parameters. Errors which are divided into systematic and random errors can bias or change the true value. It will affect the true value. Sometimes because of errors, you will get results which are far from the true value. So your results will not be accurate and the recovery will not be accepted. So because of this, errors should be removed. You can remove the errors by repeating the analysis many times, but sometimes by repeating the analysis, you cannot remove the errors. And errors cannot be calculated exactly. So it should be estimated. Estimating of these errors can be in validation by these, by evaluation of these performance parameters. And from this table, you can know the relation between errors and these performance parameters and how to evaluate these performance parameters. Trueness, which is the estimate of systematic errors and can be expressed as bias. So to evaluate the trueness, you should calculate the bias. And trueness better to be evaluated using certified reference material with a true value. If you did replicate analysis for any CRM and you got results which are close to the true value, the reference value, so the average also will be closed to the true value. So the bias will be low. 
the bias will be low and in this case you can say that there is no systematic errors or systematic errors are low and didn't affect much on your results precision which is the estimate of random errors and can be expressed as a standard deviation which can be calculated from repeatability and reproducibility so precision will be evaluated from repeatability and reproducibility and you should calculate the standard deviation to evaluate the precision so in case of precision you will do a replicate analysis but for long time scale in reproducibility and you will calculate the standard deviation if the standard deviation was low low that means your results are accurate and close to the true value and that means that random errors are low and didn't affect much on your results but if the standard deviation was high in this case your results are not accurate and there are random errors that affect much on your results but accuracy is the estimate of total systematic and random errors and can be expressed as measurement uncertainty so accuracy can be quantified by assessing of both systematic and random effects on results because as you know that measurement uncertainty is a value added to the final result to compensate all effects on the measurement and if there is any effect even systematic or random effect on the whole measurement during the whole measurement that will bias the true value will bias the true value and you may not got, get accurate result so if you added the measurement uncertainty to the final result you will compensate all systematic and random effects on the results and you will get accurate results so accuracy will be evaluated in terms of two measures trueness and the precision trueness it's better to be evaluated using crm certified reference material and crm should be provided by a crm provider which is accredited according to iso 17034 as required by iso iec 17025 2017 edition because it has a reference value provided with uncertainty limits and has a defined traceability and also this is a very stable sample stability for this sample studied to be stable for about two years so you will get crm certified reference material from a crm provider who is accredited according to 17 or 34 and he will provide you with a certificate in this certificate you will get the assigned or reference value for this target analyte plus minus measurement uncertainty to have acceptance range for your result for the crm and you will analyze this crm from six to ten times better to be ten times analysis as here in this example, reference value was 0.67 and the results you got was like this, were like this and you will calculate the average between all results and the recovery for each result should be within the acceptable range according to the guideline use all of these recoveries were accepted then you will calculate the average between results and the average between recovery and the bias percentage, bias percentage which used to evaluate the trueness equal to reference value from the certificate minus the average between all results divided by the reference value multiplied 200. So it was 0.67 reference value from the certificate minus 0.59 divided by 0.67 multiplied 200 was 12 percentage. So you have 12 percentage bias from the true value bias from the true value and according to the guideline you use you will know the acceptance range for the bias as example in your chem guideline it should be plus minus 30 percentage from 70 up to 120 percentage so this bias is accepted according to this guideline and precision which is the estimate for random errors and expressed as a standard deviation and the two most common precision measures are repeatability and reproducibility repeatability in repeatability results will be obtained by repeating the analysis six to ten times as mentioned in your chem guideline and ten times is much better by the same analyst same instrument and the same method and short time scale only one time replicate analysis on the same day so it will be short time scale but in reproducibility you need long time scale reproducibility or intermediate precision repeating the analysis six to ten times also but by different analyst different instrument and can be by different method and for long time scale but 
in most cases you don't have different instrument or different method you have the same method and the same instrument but you may have different analysts but in this case you can do intra lab reproducibility intra lab reproducibility it will be by analysis of re replicate analysis also but for different level of concentrations low level mid level and high level for each target analyte this level of concentrations will cover the range of interest or range of concentrations expected to be measured by the method so for precision to evaluate repeatability and reproducibility three different level of concentrations or more you can select selected for each target analyte based on the maximum residual limit for this target analyte as example if your target analyte has a maximum residual limit which is equal to 100 BBB or the specification limit or rejection limit 100 BBB so higher than this limit higher than this concentration the result of the sample will not be accepted will be rejected lower than will be accepted and you have the maximum residual limit for this target on 800 bb you can select a different level of concentrations based on this concentration as example low concentration or low level will be 10 bb you don't need less than 10 bb you don't need to go for 1 bb or less you can go for 10 bb or 5 bb as example as a low level and mid level 50 bbb and the high level will be 100 bbb and you can select another one one more level higher than your maximum residual limit so you will make replicate analysis of samples spiked with these selected concentrations and you will get the result for each one of them samples spiked with these different concentrations and you'll calculate the average between each replicate for this low level and average and the standard deviation calculated for each one of them then you will calculate the relative standard deviation relative standard deviation for this level and the relative standard deviation for this level and for this level and for this level which is equal to standard deviation divided by the average multiplied 200 and it should be according to your Hakim guideline less than 20 percentage to be accepted this is the acceptance range for the relative standard deviation for each level uh, or according to the guideline you use after you calculated relative standard deviation for each level then you will calculate pooled relative standard deviation by pooling the variance between all levels pooled relative standard deviation between all of these levels equal to relative standard deviation one square multiplied to n1 minus 1 n which is number of replicates that you did for each level plus relative standard deviation 2 square multiplied to n2 minus 1 number of replicates for this level plus relative standard deviation th 3 square multiplied to n3 minus 1 plus plus according to the number of levels, levels you did divided by degree of freedom for each level n1 minus 1 number of replicates here minus 1 plus n2 minus 1 plus n3 minus 1 plus n4 minus 1 and the result should be less than 20 percentage also to be accepted or according to the guideline you use so by this way you calculated the relative standard deviation and should be with this accepted range less than 20 percentage and also pull the relative standard deviation should be less than 20 percentage by this way you evaluate repeatability and reproducibility for the long, long time scale and short time scale using intra lab reproducibility that was the end for our lecture for today thank you and see you in the next lecture